What's up everyone, back for another Who Done It beer review, and today I am reviewing a beer that was sent to me by a good friend of mine and fellow beer tuber Kyle over at No Hype Beer Reviews. So about a month ago, I sent Kyle a beer mail that included some mystery beers and some non-mystery beers, and a few weeks ago, he returned the favor and kind, so I'm starting to get into that beer mail. In the description box, I will post a link not only to Kyle's channel, but the beer mail unboxing video I did of the goodies he sent my way. So if you haven't subbed to Kyle's channel, highly recommend doing so. Outside of just being uh, a guy with great beer content and somebody who reviews absolutely zero hype beers on his channel, none, never gonna happen. Uh, he is just a, an awesome dude, great dude, very generous. Along with four uh, mystery slash whodunit beers, he also sent me uh, Bourbon County brand vanilla stout, just like who does that? Kyle does, because he's an awesome dude. But anyway, uh, yeah, starting to get into the beer mail and uh, gonna start with the first mystery slash whodunit beer. Now, I call mystery beers on my channel Who Done It Beers. And the backstory on that is uh, Matt over at Massive Beer Reviews, a friend of mine, fellow beer tuber, he started the whole mystery beer uh, review craze. And I never thought anybody else would really get into it. Uh, he, he's been doing it for almost a couple years now. Uh, and when I did it on my channel for the first time, I was like, I don't want to step on Matt's toes and call him mystery beers. I'll call him Who Done It just because, you know, it's keep it something that's, I guess, exclusive to my channel or whatever. I didn't want to step on his toes. But then over the past six months, mystery beers have been become very prominent in the beer tubing community because of uh, guys like Matt. Matt actually sent off a hashtag mystery beer forward beer mail where he sent three beer tubers a beer mail and wanted them to pay it forward. Kyle and myself were included in that bunch and we did pay it forward. So a lot of different beer tubers have been uh, doing mystery beer reviews and it's just so much fun. So uh, I'm gonna keep it whodunit on my channel just because that's what I started with, that's what I'm gonna go with, but mystery beers equal whodunit beers in this case. Now you might be asking yourself, what are mystery beers or what are whodunit beers? Well, basically, it's this right here. Somebody will conceal and wrap up a beer. They will either send or give me said beer and then I'll do a review on it. I'll try to guess the style, the ABV, and if I'm bold enough, the actual beer itself, although I have yet to do it. I think I've done six mystery beer, or six, I even want to call them mystery beers on my channel. Six whodunit beers, uh, beer reviews on my channel, and I haven't even come close to trying to guess the actual beer because I'm not good enough. But uh, yeah, anyway, so this is a 12 ounce bottle. It looks like it has a black cap, but there is painter's tape everywhere and you know it's wrapped up in uh, some paper towels. What else do you need to know? We're gonna crack it, turn the trillium glass around so you guys can see the color and we'll see what's going on. Now this has been on my fridge for about 45 minutes. With these mystery beers, you don't really know what temperature to drink them at. So, I mean, Paul over at PA Brew News, he would be like, oh, it's totally, uh, you know, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure it's close to boiling. We can't, we can't do that, Paul. We got it, come on, come on, we can't. Anyway, let's give this a pour. Ooh. I did not expect this color at all. So I will just tell you at first sniff, I smelled bourbon, all right? It smelled bourbon. Soon as I cracked that, there was a waft of bourbon. But anyway, this pours out. Now, if I had to guess, and I don't know how this is gonna come off on camera because it's usually a little bit darker, but this pours out this like really deep mahogany brown color with like reddish tints on it. It looks like a straight up wee heavy. That's what it looks like, it has about a, <laughs> No head at this point. Let me try to muster up a head here. Yeah, that has a thin film of a tannish head, tons of alcohol legs. That looks, this looks, this could be a, a couple different things. This could be, from what I'm smelling, either a wee heavy that's been bourbon barrel aged, or I'm not gonna, let's just let me go into it. it. It looks like a wee heavy bourbon barrel aged. That's what I'm going with. Let's get a nose on it. Ooh. Definitely huge, huge bourbon on this one. I'm talking crazy amounts of bourbon. There is this rich caramel, toffee, almost butterscotch vibe to the nose. Molasses. Jesus, this is this is sweet too. It smells super sweet. Maybe a slight. Maybe like a slight um, dark fruit character, like a dark cherry, almost a, maybe a fig. Tons of vanilla from the bourbon, a little bit of oak tannin. Holy shit, this, this could be a couple things. This could be either a wee heavy, or it could honestly be a um, quad, or like a Belgian strong dark. I'm leaning more towards a scotch ale, but I don't know until we taste it. So let's get into it, cheers.
Hmm. You know what this is tasting like to me right now? Haven't had it in a while. Long time, actually, like three or four. Nah, it's been a couple years. This is tasting like an aged uh, Bourbon County barley wine. That's what it tastes like. I'm looking at like the thick in the 12 ounce bottle. I don't I don't know if he would A, go into his cellar and grab one and, and then put it in a beer mail for uh, who done it or mystery beers. But first off, this does definitely tastes slightly oxidized. Like this tastes like an older beer. I wouldn't say there's a ne necessarily a stale component to this one, but it doesn't taste fresh. Yeah, now I'm tasting it. This is more in the English barley wine uh, realm than the actual um, wee heavy or even a um, quad. I'm not really getting any kind of Belgian yeast characters. First off, there's tons of barrel on this one. There is a decent amount of tocan, uh, tocan, oak tannin. There is uh, tons of caramel, toffee, butterscotch, molasses, very sweet confectionery sugar uh, component to this one. The uh, body is like... Lower side of full body. The mouth feels very soft. Not necessarily creamy, but soft. It's definitely lost some carbonation. I mean, it kind of, you can tell kind of on camera, it's not very carbonated. I'm definitely drinks like a bigger beer. I would peg this around 11, we'll say hmm, 11 and a half to 12%. It's, it's, there's definitely a warming. There is a little bit of a slight astringency on the palate. It's definitely a sipping beer. Even though I'm taking this down, I'm trying to guess what I'm drinking, but this is a big boy. Some more of those dark fruit characters, like a dark cherry. A little bit of like a figgy raisin thing going on. Yeah, this is a, this is, the, first off, this is pretty delicious. Okay, let's just start that off. This is, if I had to give a rating on this, I'd give it like a 4.5 to 4.75 easily. It's delicious. This is where it becomes a bit difficult for me because... This definitely tastes like there, there's age behind it. I'm going to say this is at least least at least at three years old, I'm going to say. This, I'm going to get this wrong, but I'm going to say this is at least a 2015 or older. This is a barrel-aged a barrel aged English barley wine, around 11.5% to 12%. And uh, you know what? I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess Bourbon County. I'm going to guess Bourbon County brand barley wine. And we'll just go with like 2014. Probably going to be extremely wrong but that's that's where i'm pegging this one i just for me it has those kind of qualities if it isn't if it's some like local offering from kyle's this isn't a great beer this is a, an awesome beer how do am i supposed to get into these i always gotta so let's see what we got going on here um also i can't remember did uh the bourbon counties have a black cap that's that's another reason too why i'm kind of going with that and uh we'll see no i am way off as usual wow this isn't even uh, barrel aged, is it? Wow, I'm way off. That's cool. I'm glad I failed so miserably. All right, so this is from uh, Otter Creek and I think it's Lawson's Finest. Yeah, Lawson's Finest Liquids. Uh, they brewed this at Otter Creek. This is their double or nothing. So this is a uh, barley wine. So I got the base right. That is brewed with maple syrup. It's a maple barley wine. You know what? No, I mean, oh, aged on maple wood. Okay, well, that makes a little bit more sense. So it says a devilishly sweet barley wine aged on maple wood and brewed with a heavenly dose of Vermont maple syrup. Um, I want to say this beer is 2015. Now, you can't see it 2015. So I got the year right. I said at least 2015. This seems like an older beer. Uh, but I said barrel aged. The maple wood definitely is imparting uh, some of that oak tens, but I'm getting a lot of vanilla from this one, a lot of caramel. So I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, I did say barrel aged, um, but it's on maple wood. So you're talking in English. Um, well, they don't say American, but I'd imagine this is more in the, even if it's American or English, it's aged out, right? But you're talking a barley wine that's aged on maple wood and brewed with maple syrup. Do I get the maple syrup at this point? I do not. Uh, honestly, I do not get any maple syrup. Maple syrup for me is usually a uh, you know very prominent character most of the time. I'd imagine uh, that has kind of you know dissipated. And what I'm left with is a lot of the base English uh, barley wine. Uh, there's a lot of caramel, toffee, butterscotch, like I was saying, uh, darker fruits, and a lot of vanilla for me. Um, 
what is the, per I forgot to say the percentage, right? Where does it say it? It's gotta be on here, right? 10.5, 40 IBUs. So this definitely has aged into a beast of a beer. I said 11.5 to 12. I said uh, barley wine aged in burn barrels ends up being a uh, barley wine that is aged on maple wood and maple syrup. I think I did a solid job, definitely didn't nail it. I uh, would have loved to pick up on the maple syrup because I do think um, that I would have enjoyed it a bit more. But that said, this is fucking drinking really good right now. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely drinking like a aged barley wine of some sort. So got the base beer right. Missed on the adjunct slash barrel slash wood components. Uh, you know, missed on the on the ABV by about a percentage. But I feel pretty good about this one. And I'll tell you what, if you have any bottles of this, crack them open. It's drinking pretty well. I do think in another year or two, there'll probably be absolutely no carbonation left. And um, I don't know, it's getting a little bit tannic heavy from the wood presence. So that might become a little bit uh, worrisome. Like I said, I give this like a 4.5. It's drinking quite well. So appreciate it, Kyle. A uh, little bit throwing me for a loop. Uh, I really thought this was like, you know, Bourbon County um, when I was drinking like an aged bottle. Now again, I haven't had aged barley wine the oldest I think I had was like a one or two year, it was like a two year old English barley wine, um, or two, two year old uh, Bourbon County barley wine. Uh, I think in 16, I had the 14. So I was, it gave me those vibes. Honestly, blind gave me those vibes, but I've, honestly, it ends up not being true, but I did all right. Anyway, appreciate you guys stopping by for another Who Done It Beer review. And until the next one, cheers.